tax collectors were hated as traitors by their fellow Jewish residents in Jerusalem and the Holy Land. They collected taxes from their neighbors for the occupying Roman army. They were called tax farmers. And the Romans didn't care if they charged extra for themselves. So Matthew lived a very comfortable life, a very easy life, skimming from his fellow Jewish neighbors there. But then we have the story that Jesus was walking past the place where Matthew had his little operation. And if you can imagine the scene, Jesus coming through, it appears that he has no money. He has followers with him, former fishermen. They don't seem to have any means of support. And, but Jesus points to Matthew and he says, follow me. And immediately Matthew gets up and he leaves behind this treasure on his table. He leaves behind the life of selfishness. And he began to follow after Jesus, but not just following in his footsteps, but following in the example of Jesus, to have compassion, to care for the poor, to make sacrifice. And so the Pharisees were shocked. How is it that your teacher is choosing such a sinner? And Jesus replies, I have come not for those who are well, but I come for those who are sick. He comes to be the divine physician to heal us of our sinfulness, our selfishness. Matthew wrote a beautiful gospel. And there are many, many references to the Old Testament, 41 in fact. He was writing his gospel most especially for those of the Jewish faith who became believers in Jesus and followed the new way. So Matthew includes these many references of the Old Testament and for 37 of them, he says, and now it is fulfilled. So Jesus fulfills all the words and prophecies of the Old Testament. For example, in Exodus, we know how Moses went up the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. And he came down to make the covenant between God and the people. And the people were to follow those commandments. God promised, I will be your God, you will be my people. In Matthew's Gospel, we have Jesus going up the Mount of Beatitudes to teach. He teaches us how to care for one another, the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus ratifies the old law, but then he challenges us to go beyond. And then he starts to go through the commandments on the Sermon of the Mount. And he says, it is written, do not kill, but I say to you, do not even hold a grudge against your neighbor. Do not even have anger in your heart. Do not even call your brother by a name. So Jesus challenges us even more as he fulfills the old. So looking at Matthew, it would seem that he would not never qualify to be an apostle. Look at his record of ripping people off, of cheating, of stealing, of living that selfish lifestyle. But when Jesus pointed at him, he responded with repentance, a change of heart. He recognized the truth that in his own life, there was emptiness and sadness because of his selfishness. Matthew was honest enough to recognize that he was one of the sinners that Jesus comes to save. We begin at every Mass calling to mind our sins, recognizing that we too are being called to continue the conversion process in our life, that we can turn away from the old ways 
and turn to the Lord for the way that gives us freedom and peace.